It is me, Iga Montoya, and you killed my father. Huh? Huh? Princess Bride reference in a vlog. Have you ever seen that before? I don't think so. In the back seat, we got Mr. Mo, and we are on our way to work. Today, I think we are going to explore what it's like. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to fit through there. What do you guys think? Let's try it. Mm. Let's see what that's like. Ah, uh, let's see. Dude, give me a second here. Woo! Mmm, close shave that was. Anyway, we are off to the store and today we are going to explore what it's like to own a retail business as Carol and I have a retail business. It's called M0851. I never wanted it to feel like I was pushing it on you guys, trying to sell you stuff, because that's not what the idea of it is. It's just, I spend a lot of time in there and I like to vlog, so it's always part of the backdrop. Why not show everyone what it's like to run a retail store? So, that's what we're doing today. Join me, won't you? Oh. First stop is Elias Tailoring in Santa Monica here. I'm just getting off at Cloverfield Boulevard and heading over there. We uh, have an amazing client who's from the Philippines. She's just in town for a very short period of time. Came into the store a couple days ago, bought a slim hoodie jacket, needed the sleeves shortened. So part of the purchase price is we do the sleeve. So we take it over the tailor, they're rushing the job for me because she's heading back to the Philippines. That's the kind of level of service that we like to do at our store. We really hustle for our customers. Our customers are so, so important to us. Service, guys, is so important. I can't stress that enough. Oh. I am way late. I'm like half an hour late. But one of the best things of owning your own retail is that you are the boss and you answer to no one but yourself, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I wanted to show you guys around the store. As a retail store owner, I'm gonna walk around in here and give you guys a little visit on what's what. First off, M0851 out of Montreal, Canada. They've been doing it for 30 years, 22 stores all over the world. My wife Carol has been in love with the brand for 20 years. Four years ago, she contacted Montreal, went up, hit it off with the family. Here we are with our store. We came to the store, neither one of us had a retail background. Um, I worked in the service industry a lot, restaurants, private driving for the Saudi royal family. Carol was into fashion. She loved, loved, loved this brand which was a huge motivator to get it going and open the store my little key point takeaway pro tip here is you got to love what you're doing because there are some really really long hours working here there's a lot of times where people aren't seeing what you're doing you're just in there grinding 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 and you have to do it you got to make it work one of the key components when you're building out a store is it can get really expensive really fast I did a lot of the work in here myself I'll give you a little bit of a tour of what I did. So here is our window. First thing I did was I built this platform right in here. There's storage underneath. I wanted all the mannequins to be at the same height as people's heads as they walk by. So they're looking kind of directly at the mannequins. This industrial cart, I refurbished it. It was uh, in an old warehouse. It's from the 1800s and they're actually quite expensive. So what I did was we went out, got it. It was totally a mess. I took all the material off it, I ground it all down, filed it, sandpapered it all down, then I put a clear coat on top of it, which makes it really smooth and you can't get any splinters on it. I took all the metal off here, here, and repainted it all. 
boom, we've got a beautiful display in the front window. This is the garden I put in here. I planted this at 10 o'clock at night one night. While the street lights were illuminating the garden, it was a little bit difficult because it was hard to see. Here I am outside the store, looking into the window there. And then we come around and that's inside into the door here. And then we walk in and who's that? What's going on? As you just saw outside, there were some posters above. Got these posters here. So what happens is we get these small posters from head office and then I blow them up, take them over to a printer and get them all printed up. I can do a lot of Photoshop and Lightroom and graphic design so I will put a little bit of work into these and modify them, get them up. So the point being here is do as much as you can for yourself. Learn a lot of different things, learn Photoshop, learn email programs, learn all that kind of stuff so you don't have to pay someone else. In the beginning, you're gonna to wanna to keep all your expenses really, really low. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this here. This is a cement floor. It used to have horribly yellow, fake wood on top of it. So I came in here when this was just a shell, hit the crowbar hard, peeled up all the wood, had a guy haul it out of here, take it away. Keeping the expenses low, low, low. It was a lot of work, but, saved us a ton of money. In this back corner right here, there were two change rooms, a men's and a woman's. Went to Home Depot, bought a saw, sawed all that crap out of there. Just piled it up and had a guy ship it out of here. With regards to the lighting, there used to be a track of halogen lights in here, which are very hot, which means you have to put on the AC all the time. So what I did was I went around and researched and because I do photography, I have a sense of the Kelvin temperature on lights. These are set at 3500 Kelvin, which is a really sort of a neutral color. They're not too cold, they're not too warm. So it illuminates all the products in a very natural light, which is super important. So these lights are LED lights. We contacted a lighting company and they wanted like seven grand to come in and spec everything out and get lights. I'm like, no way. I know lighting well enough from doing photography. I just started finding lights, looking around, and I found these lights that I liked and then I just did searches on Amazon, got the prices of them way down. So I bought them in groups of four, just bought boxes of them. Also the holders for them, they wanted crazy prices. They're just like a, you can see it up there. They're just like a black cheap holder from China. So once again, my friend Amazon hit that up, got those really cheap, ordered them all in. I put them up myself, played around with the lighting a little bit and boom, no $7,000 bill for us. With regards to these two beautiful chandeliers, we have one here and then one way down there. It was a little tricky because in the center of the store, we have this air conditioning pipe that runs dead center down the store. So I had to figure out something how I could put those chandeliers up there. So what I did was these four by four wood pieces were over here. I just moved them over here. Then I built out a box, reinforced it with braces, painted it all, and then put a swivel in there so that the chandelier, if there's a uh, earthquake, it can move and rock as opposed to if it's solid, then it'll break and fall. This thing is pretty solid. You could actually get up there and swing on it. With regards to the sound system, I put this sound system way up there and it's a um, Sonos system. We have two of the Play 5s, one there and one a little farther down. Now, what I wanted to show you here is chicken wire. So they had um, Play 5 holders that were like about a hundred bucks each and I, I'm like nah so I swung over to Home Depot and I think it was like 19 bucks I bought chicken wire some brackets boom we got a sound system this is our little area at the front desk here a um, couple things I wanted to show you this is our most loved business on Montana plaque that we got from the mayor this last 2016, solid gold people, solid gold. Anyway, we're also in the running for 2017. Uh, Carol got her picture taken in this most loved Santa Monica. And there we are, winner. So we're both very proud of that because it was a lot of hard work, but um, we just have awesome customers and they went out and voted for us. Quick story I just wanted to show you with these two leather chairs right there. We had been looking all over for leather chairs. Leather chairs can get very expensive. We wanted to keep them small as to not take up a lot of room. We were actually in Laguna, walking around, went into a surf shop and we found those chairs, talked to the owner, they let us know about the company, contacted the company and we became a distributor for them and therefore we were able to purchase four chairs way cheaper than we would if we had to pay retail for them. With regards to our point of sale, we have it all on the iPad because 
It's very mobile. We can take it to anyone in the store. Mo, would you like to order something? Leather jacket, nice choice. Anyway, we just keep it up here, but we can take it anywhere in the store. We use a company out of Montreal, Canada. They are called Lightspeed. We do all our sales here. It sends it back through to the wall back there and talk to the computer there. I've wired up a printer which goes all the way through the walls and it comes back here and prints it up there. And then also what's great too is we can control our music system through Sonos right here and we can control the volume, we can turn it on, pick all our selections here and we can play music throughout the store. Concerning the fabrication of the actual display shelves here and everything else, these are all movable, the mirrors can move, the ladders can move. There were like three or four companies that we got quotes from. We had spec for all the size, we had to figure out where we wanted stuff to stop and stuff like that, but basically um, we got a plans from the head office, it was like a, a CAD drawing of what this would look like so we could see it in our heads, then we went around. Now quotes are so, so important. They were hugely, grossly inflated with some companies and other companies that were just perfect. We found these guys that were slower, but they were a lot cheaper. We knew they were slower going into them because we got them as a recommendation, but they did awesome work and we were really happy with the way it turned out. Tables are an African mahogany. They were originally spec for red spruce, which in Canada, you just go out in your backyard and saw down a tree. But in the United States, you actually have to have a trail, a paperwork trail, to say where you got the tree from, when you purchased it, this whole big long thing. And we have these big corner pieces right here, which are big squares, so you'd have to have a huge tree and then mill it down. And that was way expensive and we just couldn't find it. So anyway, we changed everything over to African mahogany, which turned out to be beautiful in the long run. I just wanted to point this thing out too. Two issues. We had this floor ground down, had a company come in and grind the floor down because it was rough concrete after I pulled up the floor. That and we had the whole building painted up at the top here. It used to be black, like dark, and just it just brought the mood down. So just wanted the whole thing painted white. Both companies came in, gave us a quote, and I'm like, no, we'll, we'll do it for this much. And they're like, mm, okay, we'll do that. So the point being is always, always bargain with people. Just because they give you a quote doesn't mean that it's solid. Work with them. Tell them you're really interested in them, but you've got other quotes coming. That is hugely important. We saved thousands of dollars doing that. Okay, the bathroom was a mess. So when we had the outside painted, we had this bathroom painted. Um, I installed, went to Home Depot once again, bought a faucet, stuck that on there, bought some lights, stuck those on there. We bought this, stuck that on there. Uh, this was from our home we put in, bought that. Really simple, just cleaned it all up in here. The main thing was the floor was horrible before. It was just like old and crappy looking. So went and got some floor tiles and then I just spent a couple days in here on my knees cutting out floor tiles and sticking them on the floor and it turned out great. Mo. Mo. My name is Mo. Anyway, that's the sort of brick and mortars of our retail business, but I wanted to give you some insight into the actual day-to-day -day of running a retail business. So let me show you around there. Carol does all the ordering. She'll order what we need from Montreal, and then we'll sit and have a conversation on how that works, keeping it within a budget, all that kind of stuff. So, we just received four boxes. I've already done one box from Montreal yesterday, and I'm just in the process of checking it in here. So it comes in, coming out of the box, there's a PO. Match it up down here. Then I just get all these, I put them into the computer, scan them into the computer, then I take them out on the floor. What we do is we have a list of bags and jackets that ladies are really, really interested in. So they come in, they go, oh, I love this, but does it come in this color? So we order it in, when it comes in, then we give them a call, we put it aside, give them a couple days to make a choice if they wanna come in and purchase it. So I'm in the process of doing all that kind of stuff right now. We keep the store open seven days a week, it's just Carol and I are the only employees here. We have not taken a vacation together in three years. She's in New York with Dara right now, so I'm holding down the fort, then when she comes back in town, I'll start doing my thing. We are here from 10 till 6 every day and then on Sunday from 11 till 5. Keeping it real, people. Keeping it real.
Okay, so I've been doing a lot of thinking. There's a lot of stuff that goes into a retail store, way more stuff that I can tell you in this vlog, so I'm just trying to pare it down to the most important things that I've come across in our almost three years of running this store. One of the most important thing is the shopper experience. The key point here is to realize that each shopper that comes in here is different. So we all have our friends, our family, our parents, our wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends that we go out and shop with. So we're used to how they shop. We get that in our head and we think that's the way the rest of the world shops. It's not, believe me, and I'll give you some examples. We have everything from ladies upstairs in a yoga class, in a tank top, coming in with their mat, in and out of here within five minutes and they bought a brand new purse. Two, people coming in here multiple times over multiple periods of the week, checking out a bag for hours. So they're huge extremes and that's just the way people are. So you've gotta be super respectful of that when they come into your establishment and they do their tour around because you just never know how people shop and you can't put them into your own framework because then they get jinxed freaked out, they don't trust you, and then they're more apt just to go, oh, I can't figure it out, and leave the store. You don't want that. And once again, to reiterate, one of the most, most, most important thing to do in your store is beyond obviously having an awesome product that people love, is service. Service, service, service is so huge. Don't give people an attitude. You never know what they've been going through in their day when they come into your store. They might be hungry, they might be in a hurry. You don't know what's going through their head, so you've gotta be respectful of what's going on with the customer. When people come in, we offer them water. It's such a simple thing, but it's huge because nobody does that. Yeah, it costs money, but it's so minimal because we're about building relationships, strong relationships in our community, service, service, service. And the other big, big, big one is location, location, location. Carol and I spent about a year looking for this location. I'll give you extreme examples. We went all the way downtown to the Arts District, which was awesome, but at that time, there wasn't enough foot traffic for us in that location. Really cool people, really interesting stuff. It's gonna be a huge area at some point because there's a lot of interest and a lot of focus to that. And then we also went, um, we went to Beverly Hills, we went up in the valley. There was a big mall in uh, Southern California here that was interested in getting us in there. Um, we looked over an Abbott Kinney, which at the time was not working for us. Oh, here's a pro tip for you. Go to the location you're thinking of opening a retail store and sit there for hours, and days at different times of the day. If you see people walking around with bags, then they're buying stuff. If you see a lot of people walking around, then all you've got is a lot of people walking around. The example for us was we went over to Abbott Kinney. At the time, there were a lot of people walking around. There's a lot of um, restaurants, there's a lot of stores over there. But behind the scenes, there's a lot of production companies, there's a lot of movie companies. So what would happen is at lunchtime, all these production companies would go out and hit the restaurants, so you'd see a lot of people, but they're not actually going into the stores to purchase anything. There's a lot of people walking around, but they aren't buying at the stores. So, pro tip for you. So the whole reason I gave you a tour of this and showed you all the work that I put into this is savings. You want to keep your costs as low, low, low as possible. So do it yourself. It's amazing what you can do if you just go out there and do it yourself. There's tutorials on YouTube. No matter what business you're doing, you can always find a friend that can help you, even if they're just putting in a couple hours to help you do some painting or do some graphics. Ask your friends, your family, girlfriends, boyfriends. They can just put in a little bit of time on your side. Make it happen. It's the best thing to do, keeping your costs low, low, low. But once you get your store open and happening, the only person you have to answer to is yourself. And that's a huge feeling if you've ever worked for goofy bosses, goofy managers, telling you stupid things to do. You have none of that for the rest of your days. The most important thing I almost forgot to tell you is dress in black absolutely have to dress in black because it makes you look hip and it's very slimming. Oh. Guys, it's getting to the end of the day. So, I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. 
I've had a tremendous time with you guys. I hope I was able to show you some insight into our business and hopefully inspire you into your business if you're thinking of getting into the retail business. I'm so glad you guys were able to join me. Thank you so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.